This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The Zoetrope and marketed as a novelty for the home viewer in the 1860s. During the same period, Philip Jacques de Lutherberg created the Eidophusicon, a special effects extravaganza that used miniatures illuminated by candlelight and oil lamps. In addition, Ottomar Anschutz created the electrical tachyscope, which used a flickering light to illuminate a series of still photographs placed along the circumference of a rotating disc, much like the zoetrope. He later developed this device into the projecting electrotachyscope, which projected these moving images on a screen. Phantom trains were also popular during this period, in which passengers would travel the world through the illusion of projected backdrops, while primitive hydraulic devices created the sensation of movement, much like today's amusement rides at Universal Studios and Disneyland. As a sort of precursor to the big-budget cinema spectacles of the 1950s, Robert Barker's Panorama, which played in Edinburgh in 1787, presented to audiences views of huge paintings that recreated famous historical tableau. Such early magic lantern devices as the Chromatrope, Idotrope, and Peter van Muschenbroek's magic lantern used mechanical apparatus to shift the images in front of the audience's eyes, creating the illusion of movement. Yet all these early gestures toward what would become the motion picture remained merely tantalizing hints of what might be accomplished until the late 19th century, when a series of inventions by a number of technicians and artists throughout the world brought the idea of moving pictures to primitive fruition. Perhaps the most famous progenitor of the cinema was Edward Mybridge, who created motion studies of cats, birds, horses, and the human figure in 1872, using a series of up to 40 still cameras whose shutters were released by tripwires, activated by Mybridge's subjects. The First Movies Working in Palo Alto, California, Mybridge's most celebrated experiment took place near the beginning of his career, when he was hired by Leyland Stanford, then governor of California, to settle a bet as to whether or not a horse had all four legs in the air during a race, or relied upon one leg on the ground at all times to keep balanced. In 1878, Mybridge used his tripwire technique to produce a series of images of a galloping horse at a Palo Alto racetrack decisively demonstrating that a horse did indeed have all four legs off the ground when running at a fast clip. By 1879, Mybridge was using his zoopraxiscope to project these brief segments of motion onto a screen for audiences. The average clip ran only a few seconds. This is the beginning of projected motion pictures, arising from a series of stills taken by a number of different cameras, run together rapidly to create the illusion of motion. Another cinematic pioneer, Etienne Jules Marais, invented what might be considered the first truly portable moving picture camera in 1882, a machine-gun-styled affair that photographed twelve plates in rapid succession on one disc. In 1888, Marais switched to Eastman paper film instead of glass plates and was able to record forty images in one burst using only one camera. Perhaps the most mysterious figure of the era is louis Aimé augustin Le Prince, whose experiments in cinematography were revolutionary and remain controversial to this day. In Paris, in 1887, Le Prince built a 16-lens camera, capable of photographing 16 images in rapid succession of a single scene. By March or April of 1888, Working in Leeds, England, Le Prince successfully created a single-lens camera that used a series of photographic plates to record motion, later replacing the plates with perforated paper film from the George Eastman Company, as Marais had, for greater ease of projection. In October 1888, Le Prince photographed his brother Adolphe playing the Melodeon, a primitive accordion, in the garden behind his laboratory. In the same month, he photographed members of his family in the same garden at Oakwood Grange, strolling through the grass. 
In the summer of 1889, although some historians say 1888, Le Prince photographed what would become his most famous sequence.